Welcome back to the ZBrush Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning into ZBrushLive.com and the ZBrush Podcast wherever you're listening. We want to take just a quick moment to talk about ZBrush subscription pricing. And if you follow the link that we have provided in the description, you'll see that we do have a one month price for ZBrush, which is $39.95 a month, or the six month pricing, which is $179.95 a month, or the perpetual license, which is $8.95. And that currently is a one time cost that never expires. So we assume most of you that listen to the podcast already own ZBrush, but if you have friends or people that are interested, in getting into digital sculpting or ZBrush. All of this information can be found by following this link. And for all of you ZBrush podcast listeners, we would greatly appreciate any reviews, comments, or feedback wherever you're watching these episodes or checking out our shows. Also, of course, likes and subscriptions would be greatly appreciated, and we already appreciate all of you that have already done so. If you have been tuning into our content on ZBrushLive.com, we have a very special, unique tool for you using Discord. So in the description of this episode, you'll see a sign-up link, which you can sign up, and you can join the conversation with all the ZBrushers out there that are using Discord. And it's a great way to just communicate and connect with other artists and creative people like yourselves. So we thank all of you ZBrushers out there for your continued support. So that covers all of our news updates. This episode is with our guest, Raphael Grissetti. He is an art director at Santa Monica Studio, and they're most notably recognized for their latest project, God of War 4, or God of War. Raphael gave a presentation at the ZBrush Summit in 2019, so we had a chance to grab him to have a quick podcast conversation, which we've never had, and he is a legend in the ZBrush community. If you aren't familiar with his work, you can check out his ZBrush Central thread. We'll post that in the description to see all of his amazing top row work, and as well as his presentation, which is available on YouTube, which is all about bringing a character to life. And Raph is a true inspiration and insanely talented artist, so you don't want to miss that presentation. In this episode, we talk a lot about his personal work and his personal experiences in the industry and going through so much that he's gone through to achieve success to get to where he is today. This is an episode you absolutely don't want to miss, and we were so happy and fortunate to get a chance to talk with him. So without any further delay, we give you Raphael Corsetti. Just to kind of introduce you to the people that are watching the stream, uh, you are currently an art director at uh, Santa Monica Studios. Yep. And your latest project was God of War 4, which is just labeled God of War. Yep. Um, so I'd love to talk a little bit about that because that's probably a pretty crazy process, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. What was the, uh, I mean, for you coming from, so you've been a, you've been a lead artist, you've mm-hmm. been a lead character artist, lead artist in uh, many places, and then sort of elevating to the art director position, what do you find is the difference between the creative position and going to director? Um, it's funny. So the, the God of War project, I started as a, as a senior artist, then I went to a lead okay. position, and I worked most of the project as a lead, and then towards the end, I started having more of the, the art director responsibilities and look over more departments and stuff. So even throughout that project, I went through all the different kind of uh, differences from the role. Yeah. Um, and it is much more of like managing people, like you said, and, and uh, being able, being part with different departments, understanding. So I come from a more advertising background, so I know a lot of like in the trenches, like getting a project done in like two weeks and stuff like that. So I started learning a lot about everything, and that was like super helpful. Especially now, I look back and uh, me understand <clears throat> understanding at least how things are built to beginning to end helps a lot in the process. So I think at this position right now, having that knowledge is super important. I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine that's huge. I mean, that's probably, I would I would expect that that's a big part of what a lot makes you, what makes them see you as a, a person to be the art director, right? You have that knowledge and experience. You've done everything. You know right. all those sort of facets and you can collaborate with everybody much yeah. better that way. Being able to talk about specifics on certain things when you're giving feedback, like that's the that's the really, really important thing, especially like when you make that lead transition. Yeah. I think that that's when it starts to uh, matter a lot more. Like being able to communicate is, of course, the, the you it's know one of the one. big one. Yeah. Especially for that lead position, being able to manage people in the team, talk. It's a lot more man- management skills of like talking yeah. to people, make sure people are happy, scheduling. Like at Sony, we have a lot a lot of producers. It's a very producer heavy studio. So even the, the the leads they don't have a lot of knowledge on that, but there's a lot of support from the the produ- producing team of like here's the schedule, yeah. Give me give me the estimates, you execute it. So there's that partnership, which is super important. Yeah. Uh, but now moving more into the art direction role, then it's more 
me talking to the leads and the production and make sure everybody's working together and then giving feedback to the team. So I don't get a lot of time to do my just art in general. Um, and that's when it, you know a lot of the personal stuff come, comes in. And I do try to do a lot, a lot of art. I just don't have time. Sure. So that's, that's, the, uh, that's, the, that's part of the game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's kind of the challenge. I, I like the management stuff a lot. Um, it, do have, it does come with a, you know, a price of like sure. the art side. But it's something that I get um, fulfilled when I'm doing that kind of stuff. So, so when you were going through, so you're, and when you were in sort of lead, leading up to art director position, so you were working in, as far as uh, sort of like the lineage of this, the game, going from concept to like production characters. Do you work in concept or you work just on production assets? Like is that sort of what you're focusing on is production assets? Right now? Yeah. As an art director? Yeah. Uh, it, it's everything from, from VizDev, uh, from narrative to VizDev to, to production, and then animation, lighting, environments, okay. everything. Wow, yeah. that's a lot. Yeah, that's quite a lot. Yeah, it's been kind that's of the amazing. Whole, the whole process. It, it was good because last project I was doing a lot of that stuff because the way the team evolved, um, a lot of us were doing a lot of different things to help the project, and then the team, uh, you know, grew with the project, and we started fulfilling a lot of the positions. But it it was good for me since I had that knowledge. I could help. I helped with lighting, a little bit of environments, props, everything. Yeah. So I was experienced enough in all those things and and since we built a team there was a lot of trust that came with that so it was more of a natural process but now it yeah. is kind of overseen i see everything yeah. well i mean that game in particular i'd love to talk about it because it's it's still a widely talked about game i mean ign gave it a 10 there's yeah, got to yeah. be something i know that the the history of that game is it sort of transitioned into a new sort of way of playing the game yeah, yeah. but what do you think is the what do you think is what, what you and your team did that made this different made it so successful no, it's been only a year, a little bit more than a year, but yeah. for me, it feels like a few years. Well, <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, I can imagine. <laughs> it's been uh, crazy after that, like especially with all the you know press and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what we did different is to look at the project as a game, not as a piece of of uh, showcase certain tech or anything. It was it was a lot of like, especially that coming from like top down, the team was you know this is a game. Here's what it takes to make a good game. Yeah, uh, of course the art needs to be. Up on there, it's, yeah. so, it's one of those things that people just kind of think it's like, okay, art's going to be there no matter what. But, but and that's not, not always the case, the case right? Not the case, yeah. Would, so, did you guys treat this? Was that sort of a mandate? Where you was that part of the sort of uh, the the change in trying to make this new version because there had been so much time? Yeah, yeah. Was art sort of a, a big point that you wanted to land on to make it really, really visually interesting? It was, but it was always serving the game. Okay, like that was the thing. Like we early on on the first E three review, there was a lot of like, oh, let's make a pretty demo. And then after that, it was like, how do we make 50 hours of that? Yeah. And it was like impossible. I can only imagine. Yeah. And so it's always like, okay, we have the assets. We know what the quality is, the, the, the benchmark is, and we have the team to make that. So that was the big thing. Like, let's build a team with artists that can deliver on that quality without having... So a lot of, pretty much all our team was senior artists. Yeah. So we, without having a lot of um, hand-holding throughout the process, it's like, okay, we know, you know what the quality is to de deliver on that as long as it's serving the, the, the purpose. And the VizDev team was, was incredible too. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of very good uh, art to work from. And that's another thing that usually is taking for granted of like the support of that and make sure we get... We got a lot of people with a lot of game experience and a lot of people coming from the movie industry mm -hmm. as well. So that was kind of that nice balance. Is that mostly all just conceptual artwork or is there, are there animatics at, at all? Are there any kind of like storytelling or storyboarding oh, elements that you're yeah, getting no, from all that? Yeah, there's all of those things. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The yeah. storyboarding part is very kind of uh, picked. There's only a few moments that we go through storyboard and everything, but we have a storyboard artist as well and, yeah. and he usually helps with a lot of different things. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, just a quality in general and then serving the game. I think that was those, those two things. We got to a point where a lot of the enemies and gameplay or gaming mechanics that artists hate, yeah. you know, we had to make that trade to make the game look better. Yeah. And I think it speaks to the style that we were able to deliver, which is kind of like different from some of the games that are out there. Very different. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what why it got such high praise because not only does it fit the mold for a great uh, sort of game where the, the mechanics that were built, like just the development put into the game mechanics alone were amazing. Yeah, yeah. But then on top of that, you have that really awesome element of storytelling mm -hmm. and like cinematic quality that just like combines the best of kind of what it was. Yeah, yeah. And then where a lot of games are going now, which is so those big cinematic adventures, like you get mm -hmm. The Last of Us and Red Dead Redemption. And like, that's becoming like a thing that 
it isn't just like a niche group of people anymore. A lot of people love that style. Yeah. And it's just it because I think it's just because you can really capture that quality now, right? Yeah, yeah. Like it's now, it never used to, like we were just talking about that before we came on. It's like the quality has changed so quickly with real time that mm -hmm. you just get, I mean, you don't even have to play cinematic clips anymore a lot of times, right? You yeah, get yeah. straight in game and it looks amazing. Yeah. Well, that game, uh, the God of War was no camera cuts at all. And that yeah. created all the, the challenges to transition to uh, end game to cinematic without having camera cuts and how do we, do we place lights to like uh, make it a, a cinematic experience without being having the lights in the environment. So that was a lot of challenges yeah. that came with that too. But we still have to do a lot of hacks and stuff like mm -hmm. that to make it look, you know, just the real time, plop it in, it's good, it looks good. It just yeah. not, doesn't look good. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of just hacks that, that needs to be done. Interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, you really kind of got, you got to, so you actually have, you have assets in the game, right? Mm -hmm. You worked on a lot of these character assets um, and then also getting to full art director. So you're kind of a big part of this team for, for and, and you had a very professional team of artists as well. It seems yeah, like yeah. Mm -hmm. top tier. How many artists were you working with on a the, regular basis? The character team, uh, we were about nine, okay. nine guys. Then we had a facial guy. Um, uh, this when a lot of the Glauco and Igor, like some of the, the Brazilian team came in, like, um, like yeah, we'll talk about the Brazilian the, team at some point. <laughs> halfway through the project, and that, that was fun. And, and Maxence and Arda and Chris Gilly. A lot of people, it, it was a big team. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And a lot of this, a lot of senior guys. Yeah. And then the environment team is is massive. It was like I can imagine because that's teams. a game that relies heavily on just a ton of environments yeah. and set extensions and all that kind of stuff. So it's I yeah, can yeah. imagine that's a, that's a big part in itself, right? Yeah, yeah. And sound yeah. design was awesome as well. Yep. That's really great. I mean, the, like the Sony team is... is Really impressive. Like, yeah. like just the, the amount of support that the, the studio gave to the project after that E3 demo was yeah. good. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's like how do we, we now we have to make this and uh, we were able to hire a lot of people and and uh, ramp up to to deliver. So it was it was challenging though. Yeah. It was pretty. pretty I can imagine. Yeah. Well, it's a it's an amazing project and it, like I know it's been a marathon for you. It's been a few years, but there's a lot of people out there still talking about it. So I, right, yeah. I we all look forward to what until you guys Last of be Us doing. Two come out. Yeah. Episode. Well, that's uh, that's another one that we're all waiting to come out eventually, but it, that'll yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah. But it's yeah, that's that's a big one. But no, it, I think God of War is going to be in the memory of everybody for a long time right. for sure. That's cool. So the uh, just in, just because you've been you, I mean you've been in, and I want to get into the ZBrush stuff, but. As I mentioned, you, I mean, since I've been in the ZBrush community for 10 plus years and yeah, yeah. you've been a legend in it since I've been in it. Yeah, yeah. And everybody kind of knows your work and knows the lineage of the games. You've worked on games like The Order, 1886, mm -hmm. uh, Killzone, yeah, yeah. Uh, just like a ton of great IPs, Infamous 3. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people out there that are always trying to figure out what's the best way to, I mean, you've gone through kind of like the trenches to the art director position, which is, yeah, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of steps in there. Right. And uh, to kind of get to where you got started, like sculpturally speaking, and how you get into ZBrush, what's your history like? Like, how did you start in art to begin with? Yeah. yeah. Well, I would say even to that, like, don't, like, I was never aiming to the to the AD position. And I would say people shouldn't aim to that position. It, it, sh it should be something that come comes more naturally once you're in a place. Because, like, you will never get a hired by, you know, for an AD if you don't have the experience. Mm -hmm. and the way to get there is to, go through the steps inside of a studio. Um, but I, I started, like I said, in, in advertising. And then I, uh, when ZBrush came out, so it was a long time ago, uh, <laughs> and I started to do we a lot of- won't say how long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I started to do a lot of sketches. And I remember a lot, like you're saying, people doing a lot of sketches on the first versions. And uh, even, uh, you know, people are starting to do paint, paint overs on top. And so I started to just try a lot of things and build my portfolio on that. And I did it enough that I, I left my job, started doing freelance for a while. Uh, what was it when you were doing advertising? So you were doing advertising work in, say, 2D? No, it was 3D. Oh, I was so doing mostly, it was everything, but mostly animation, uh, a little bit of modeling. And then when ZBrush came out, I kind of had, you know, when head down in modeling. You're from, you're from Brazil. From Brazil, Were yeah. you in Brazil at, any the, at this time? Yes, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was uh, Sao Paulo back in Brazil. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, and, and back then, even still now, like a lot of, most of the studios are advertising. Yeah. So we were doing TV ads and printed ads. And so I was able to learn even that range of like the differences between, you know, a 30 second uh, ad versus like a, a six minute long short in yeah. a, a printed ad and all those little things. And it kind of reflects back to the, some of the stuff that I'm doing now, which is which is cool, even to look back at that. That's actually um, pretty remarkable. That's yeah, kind yeah. of a big step. Is like you were in something that's totally different, but you actually you, you learned something from that. Learned that you so can much. Apply yeah. now. Yeah, 
And, and that's one of the things I always say is like, if you are starting finding that little job that maybe it's a studio that you never wanted to work with, but you're going to learn so much if you yeah. start working there. Um, so like definitely expose yourself. And that's what I did. And I learned so much. And, but when ZBrush came out, it definitely changed the, the, what I thought I was going to do because I was definitely going more towards the animation route. Yeah. And then building my portfolio, I was able to get a lot of clients for cinematic back then because that was, and uh, I think it still is, but, well, maybe not anymore. But the, back then, the cinematic freelance jobs were all over the place because cinematics were like high up there yeah. with Blur. and Right, there was uh, only a few studios, studios that were doing it right. It's like Blizzard and Blur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Plastic Wax, I worked uh -huh. for those guys a lot. And, um, and now that kind of died a little bit because of what we just talked about. Like the, the quality has been, uh, yeah, improving so much. But anyways, yeah, I did that for a while. Uh, and then I started doing some stuff for toys with Hasbro. Um, I still working with Hasbro to this day, which is pretty remarkable. That's it's awesome. probably the company that I've been working at, you know, for on the your freelance time. sector, like yeah, getting, yeah. you're getting the external sort of on the side jobs. You get yeah. to do that stuff on the yeah. side. That's cool. Yeah. Some of the quick stuff that's super fun. Yeah. Um, well, nobody's faster than you. Like yeah. you're cranking stuff out <laughs> on a regular basis. You're blowing people's minds all the it's time. Funny. So we'll talk about that too, because okay. like it, it's, takes time, like sure. when it, especially when you're dealing with clients and stuff. That's why I love to do my own stuff. But yeah, but yeah, I did that for a while and then um, started to build. Like I started to wanting to leave Brazil, and the only re the only way to do that back then was to go work for games because games were the only studios that were hiring people from the outside and, and dealing with all expenses and everything. And games were growing, you know, a lot. And especially when ZBrush came out, the need to find people to use the tool was and still is very, uh, you know, very, very hard to find. Demand, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I did that, built my portfolio, and then uh, ended up leaving for for Bioware. Uh, worked there for a year. So that was, yeah, year. I guess, was that your first IP for that was uh, maybe Mass Effect. It was Mass Effect. Mass Effect. Yeah. Okay, man, yeah, that's yeah. great. That's a great project. Oh yeah, that was incredible. Yeah. So I learned learned a lot on that too, and worked with uh, Herbert Lewis and uh, Rodrigo Prelli, Kobe Jukes. Mm -hmm. Like all those guys were like, you know, my my idols back yeah. then, and, and still are, but. Uh, had a chance to work with them, learn a lot. Um, but the, I, my my wife, I moved in with the wife. The wife didn't like the city as much. We went to Montreal. Mm, okay. With like the French and the the, the winter. And all I'm that sure stuff. that's a it's a pretty big transition from Sao Huge. Paulo yeah, yeah. to Montreal. That's like it's Huge. very different. Yeah. I, do you think it's is it better in California and LA? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. Not not just because the city, but just the, the industry and everything. I ended yeah. up moving to San Diego when I first moved down here. And that was like, especially from Brazil, was like the dream city. Like, yeah, I still I can love imagine. that city. I love San Diego. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's when I worked with, uh, you know, already with Sony and worked with all those projects, The Order and Infamous. And it was a lot more on the facial stuff back then. And that's when I got exposed to a lot of that pipeline and scanning and, and facial cleanup and fax and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. the, kind of the behind the scenes stuff that yeah. that not a lot of people know about. Right, because you post uh, you put stuff up on ZBC and like, you know, stuff that your, your stuff always goes top row, right? But it's like you get these amazing final renders, but the process yeah, yeah. is what everybody wants to know about, but it's like, right. it, it's just, it's, it's kind of hard to break that stuff down for yeah, everybody, yeah. right? Yeah, it's something that's hard to find people even to fill those roles of like, you know, facial artists, plain shape artists, yeah. like that kind of stuff. Yeah. But that was an awesome experience. Um, I went there as a, a supervisor, kind of a lead already, without knowing much about the process at all. And, and you know, super thankful to, for those guys to, to they have kind of taught me the process and everything. Yeah. Um, but then uh, I was in talk with a few a few different studios, and uh, Sony was one of them, or Santa Monica was one of them. Yeah. So for I guess for you, where like you, seven years ago, is that part of the? Yeah, gosh, you can't even keep track of time anymore, right? I know. Trust me, I, I get that. The uh, w like when you're an artist in a position like that is like just advice for other people out there. It's it's always good. We were talking about challenging yourself and actually putting yourself in a position to like you might love that thing that you're doing. You might mm -hmm. love that studio and love that position, but yeah. do you would you recommend that people still continue to seek other things and always look at that next step? Like were you always looking for yeah, yeah. other things just to kind of like keep yourself um, I, I think so. Yeah. I think it I'm always on the side of the artist versus the studio. Like I see the studio will always look you know, to the studio side. Of course, like the studio cares about who the, the people who are working there and it, it is a family, but I, I, I'm always going to be on the side of the, of the artists. Mm -hmm. right? And I think the way you grow professionally, if you look, if you go, go around, fight, find things, uh, look at different pipelines, you're always going to learn something different. You're always going to bring something with you. Yeah. That's when you're going to, uh, people are going to see the value on, in you. So 
I mean, of course, there are people who stay in the studios for way too long. I mean, I'm, it's, it's going to be like six, seven years already. Yeah. I'm, I'm there. But it's because I'm always finding something that I am growing professionally. Mm-hmm. I think it's more to me was always how can I grow professionally? Uh, you know, if I stay here year to year, where, where you know, where I'm going to be next year? Like, yeah. what am I going to be doing? How can I, even if I'm still here, how can I be better next year? And, mm-hmm. and always improving. And that's why I'm doing all this prof- uh, personal stuff now. And um, always trying to find, like, what is the next step? And even if it's a step back in your head, it might be a step forward. And, you know, sure. in the future, in the long term. That's why moving to different studios, trying different things. I was in a, you know, back then when people left where I was working, I used to get upset and angry. Now it's just, to me, it's just... It's part of the it's process. Normal. Like it's normal. It's yeah. normal. Yeah. yeah. That seems to be a big part of the games industry. Is there's a lot of movement happening all the time. Yeah. And I'm sure that has to do with just projects. They have you have long winded projects, and then people shift, and yeah. you know by then you're ready to go do something else. And there's just right. like a constant sort of cycle of yep. people coming in and out. I mean, there's a lot of. Uh, it is hard to find people because it's a very new industry, and it's very specific to like oh you need to find up someone that's a senior. Uh, you know, narrative combat for creature guy. Like, how? Where the That's hell are you going to find that? That's a crazy specific yeah. title. <laughs> like, how? How are you going to find those people? Uh-huh. Of course, you're going to have to kind of poke different studios and try to grab people from those yeah. studios. And that's when you know people are going to make more money. Uh, so, so it is kind of a cycle that happens, project to project, and people will leave, especially when the the project ramps down. Uh, so, yeah, it happens. It happens a lot in the movie industry as well. Yeah, it's just I think I in the that. games is. Um, I don't know, maybe the people talk more or, or maybe it's just not used to that. Maybe because it could be. Industry. I mean, you look at just the film industry as a whole, it's been around for a whole lot longer. Right. You know, it's like you just said it. It's it's such a new industry, like relatively speaking. It's very new. Yeah. And it, comparatively, the film industry and the visual effects in itself is still new, but it's still been around a lot longer. Yeah, it's yeah. Still, but even then you get a lot of crazy stuff happening in visual effects too. It's yeah, a I, similar kind I of thing. Hear, yeah. Games just seems a little bit more snappy because the technology is evolving so much more quickly. Yeah. So like we were talking about machine learning tools and things like Houdini, like yeah. when that stuff gets introduced, the skill sets change and that's another skilled person that you need to find, a very specific thing that yeah. is still, there's probably not a whole lot of people that are going in those roads, but yeah. like it's probably good to take time to learn those new tools sooner yeah. than later, right? No, because for sure. it's, it's going to continue to evolve. Yeah, we are you know, we're always trying to uh, bring people from the movie industry that has a little bit of that knowledge, mm-hmm. but it's always tricky because mm-hmm. there's so much that goes with a, a game uh, production that kind of sometimes gets kind of forgotten. Or, yeah. So there is a lot of just a ramp up to that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, yeah, it's just a, just a new industry. And we are, you know, LA is a huge indu- uh, huge city for the game industry. Right. And you imagine that in like smaller cities and stuff like that. Yeah, people need to always bring people from, from the outside. And right. it's so hard to right. make a big AAA studio game like outside of LA. And, yeah. Or, or, um, yeah. I was, was going to ask you this. I, I, I tend to see a lot of Brazilian artists that like some of the best sculptors we've seen out there especially in the zebras community yeah. are brazilian mm-hmm. i don't when you were in brazil did you did you start in clay did you start traditionally uh no i, I did start more with the animation okay but then zebras came uh was released and uh, alex oliver was doing okay. a lot of zebras and he was doing clay mm-hmm. as well and and he kind of uh, expand a lot of for for all, a lot of us just like oh you could do both and it's very similar. You can I think Alex Oliver is a and, big and, and, he's a big figurehead for uh, a lot of people. Like anybody who went to him yeah. seemed to grasp something. He yep. seems to be a very good uh, instructor and educator. In that. Well, I think back then he was already doing stuff so fast, and yeah. it's like he just got the formula down. Yeah. He was doing stuff in clay for years and years, and he definitely went head down in ZBrush and learned the tool and. It was just impressive to see him make that stuff. And yeah. I think a lot of us that are working in the industry now that started together with him or learning from him, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot that we, maybe that's why, you know, we try to make stuff fast and mm-hmm. it's that kind of, we, I think we got it from him of like. Just the ability to kick stuff out quickly right, yeah, yeah. and not fest rubber stuff. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. That's a big thing that new people mm-hmm. struggle with is like, well, what do I learn first? Do I learn anatomy? Do I learn, you know, whatever. And there's, of course, there's natural ability is a big sort of thing that some people could just get and they can skyrocket and go a lot quicker. But I feel like it's a learned skill no matter what. If It's it's a marathon no yeah. matter what. Like if you yeah, spend the, the time, biggest. you figure that stuff out eventually as long as you have patience, yeah. right? That but, is the biggest thing. And uh, I blame ZBrush a little bit for that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's completely <laughs> fair. Because <laughs> even before when you started, it's like, okay, 
make a face out of a box in, in Max or something. Oh, and it was like, even get me oh, started. my God, how do I, like, <laughs> topology doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense. And now at ZBrush, you can make a face even if you don't have a lot of knowledge on that right. stuff, right? So, um, or just take a face and turn it into another face. Into, yeah. yeah. Right. So it, there's a good goods and bads. Like I feel that, especially when we're hiring, that's why we come and a lot of the, the students and, and new people that would come in the studio, we usually grab from Nomun and, and schools like, like this one. Yeah. Because we know that people went through that process and they, yeah. they know that there is a step or there is a process to the madness. Well, like, and that's one of the best things about Nomun. Uh, especially being here on campus, we see this all the time, is they just, they've just they been so established and the instructors here are industry professionals that yeah, yeah. like they're specific to all the things that you're talking about. They've gone through it themselves yeah. and they're passing that information off to these new kids coming into this industry that mm -hmm. you don't get in every university, right? You don't get that at... It, it, there's a lot of schools that don't have a, a modern, up-to-date pipeline just right. because, like you said, it's so hard to find people that can actually give you that stuff that yeah, you, yeah. and those people are it, it, ideally working in the field still, yeah. right? They keep it, you know, they keep it under wraps almost. Yeah. It's like, I see like things like rigging and animation and some of that stuff is like, you can learn the basics, but there's some specific technical things that you'll never know about until you get into that studio, yeah. you know? And it's like, how do you get that person to go teach at a school yeah, yeah. and pass that off to everybody? It's just... Yeah. Well, like, a lot of the times you don't have to know everything or be like an expert in everything, but you need to know... The, like basics. the basics. Yeah, if yeah. someone's going to talk to you or you understanding how everything works because, yeah, you, you, that's the stuff that people are not going to teach you in studios. It's just that there's that expectation that you know. Yeah. So that's why uh, schools like, you know, going to school is good. Uh, but even like for the people who are starting, like you mentioned anatomy and uh, definitely going like step by step of like not just picking a full project or trying to design a character from the start. Yeah. Like that's one of the things that I've seen the most that it kind of hurts your time probably because you are spending a lot of time on something that we know it's not going to maybe even if it's good it's not going to be uh, super helpful for you in the future yeah so it, it is like taking a step back ignoring a little bit design or designing your own projects and learning the tool learning how to mimic or uh, reproduce something yeah. like if it is like you know uh, a cup or something like how do you sculpt that and mm -hmm. step by step with reference like being a you know to uh, start small with something everything. like that yeah. doing something specific yeah, yeah being able to to um, control the tool before you mm -hmm. go crazy and yeah. you know, stuff. And then anatomy comes next and yeah. That's something you get like teaching stuff. anatomy. I mean, I've gone through this myself. You, you end up like with students, you'll get, it's like everybody wants to go right to the final, final polish, right? You go way too fast and you get too far ahead of yourself and you miss landmarks and foundation and silhouette and just right. like bony, bony structures and just like the basic stuff, like spend more time on the structure mm -hmm. and then you put that stuff in and it's a lot easier. But yeah. that's just kind of like, it's a methodology Everything has a methodology, right? No, exactly. Yeah. Trying to find find the best teacher that can that can show you that stuff. Too. Yeah, good, yeah, which is always hard to find. But Alex <laughs> Oliver does seem to be like one of those guys that like he's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. that's awesome. Do yeah. you keep up with him still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of touch base. He's still back back in Brazil, but yeah, but, um, yeah, we, we talk. That's great. Yeah. So I guess for you, because um, as you're you're still holding your title as art director, but you've been talking a lot about your personal work, which you're going to be presenting here today at the mm -hmm. summit later. Um, can we talk a little bit about what you've been working on, like what you have yeah, yeah. sort of under the pipeline, what you're, what's getting you excited? Yeah, of course. Let's see here. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you start? Uh, I think I got into, like since I went to more of this AD position, I've been trying a lot to uh, express ideas the fast way as possible and making characters do take a long time, right? yep. as we all know, yep. from months to years and, and all that stuff. So I've been trying to find things in my pipeline that could be, and I've been doing trying to do that for a while, but now it's been very much how can I speed up or how can I present ideas in a way that are presentable, not just for myself or for the team, but like can I actually present this in a uh, concept way or... Uh, so a lot of the things that I've been doing is that kind of experiment. Like do I sculpt a lot, but then how can I present that? Like Because I've been uh, doing a lot of these ZBrush renders for, for a long time, but it was always with a more finished product. It was always, I would just do a render. But now it's, can I do a sketch and then bring it to final without relying too much on the tool? Mm. So that was a lot of the, you know, those kind of experiments. And then, of course, just I think just trying different styles. Like something that I've been, is, has been with me for since the beginning of my career, especially from advertising and all that stuff. And uh, I think it got detracted away from all that stuff. And it's something that I love 
And I've been just trying to do more of that. I still like I, and especially because I tried to do it and I didn't like what I was doing. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, I need to get better at this. And you just like, that's something that you could see. That's But that's kind of exciting, right? Yeah. Does yeah. that get you fired up? Because that does for me. Oh, yeah. That, that is what. If you don't have that, up. then it's like, it's harder to be productive, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. especially like when you do something and then you think it's good. And then you live with it for a week, and then yeah. you look back, and it's like, oh my god! That's like, like every so like you feel like working for a whole day, and yeah. you finish off of the night, you're like that looks pretty good. And you go in there, look at it the next morning, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> like it just Horrible. yeah, exactly. Uh, so even like the beginning, I was holding like a couple of weeks before I even put something out because I was like, oh man, let me look at it for a while, yeah, before, because I think the social media is another part of it too, but like that can that can kind of make it or break it. You know? Yeah, that's true. How do you feel about? I mean, just the. Imagery in itself, it's like we have so much amazing artwork that we look and look at and see every day. Zero Central Art Station now, yeah, and yeah. all these places. Uh, yeah. Do you, Do you find that that's um, a, a sort of like propelling you to make you want to do more and better? I mean, because it seems to be like the quality is going up so exponentially, exponentially faster. Yeah. And I just wonder how far that that's going to push it. You know, yeah. like where are we going to go with this? Like yeah, it comes I, down to yeah. maybe more like more creative character designs, more creative creature designs. I think so, yeah. yeah. Like finding what's iconic or finding your style. And because yeah. I see a lot of the stuff in Art Station and, and Instagram and all that those those websites and pushes me, challenges me to like maybe I can do this. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and I that's. I wish I had more time because I do want to try to do, even if I'm just replicating at the beginning, but I do want to see if I can get to that quality and mm -hmm. um, especially working a, a lot more closer to VizDev artists now and kind of seeing a little bit more of they, their process and it's like, can I achieve something like that and use 3D as part of it? And I mean, pretty much every concept artist now is using 3D as some some sort of, yeah. of some kind. Just to get perspective and just yeah, a quick yeah. form and then paint right. overs. Yeah. yeah. Some of them get even, you know, deeper than that of just like sculpting the thing, but like, can I do some of that stuff? Like, I think, not that I want to do that professionally or, or it's something that I've been striving to be the best at, but I just want to, it's just a challenge of like, can I pull this off? And, yeah. like, and then can I mix with the things that I know I'm studying and I'm good at? Can I start mixing that with the stuff that I'm doing and um, and push push from there? So it's not, I think that's even how you find your own style. And, and to me, my style ch uh, changed throughout the years mm -hmm. because it's always been, I see something. Can I can I do that? Can I add my own twist to it? And then can I keep going? Yeah. You know? So my personal work now it's been more about that. Uh, especially this last year, I've been posting a lot of stuff. But it's been it's been I've been posting it because I can present it now. I think I've been doing this for the entire of my career, like kind of nonstop, but a much larger larger project that takes a lot of time. But I've been kind of. I've always been working towards, you know, this kind of uh, process, but now I'm just posting it more because... So did you I find the, the, like, you're talking about the presentation in terms of the, like, sort of how you envision that sort of final output? Because you seem to always have, I mean, you, you have an incredible sculptural eye, but then I've noticed just seeing your work over the years, you also have a really great visual eye for color and just, like, presentation as a whole. Right. Is that, does that take a lot of extra time for you? Is that like a part that adds to the process? I think it, that's the part that I'm trying to improve now. Mm -hmm. And uh, that and then the design sense as well. Like, can I design stuff myself? or Because mm -hmm. I, as so a like character no artist, reference. no reference. or yeah. I mean, no uh, concept, but tons right. of reference, yeah. Right. Because as, as a character artist, you do get, part of the job is for you to detach yourself from that because mm -hmm. you need to get a concept, execute on. And there's a lot of like, I think the job is interpreting a drawing or a 2D art and making you know, bring your own take on it or improving it. Mm -hmm. That's the character art role. And I find myself always having to try the design stuff. I, I never felt that I was good enough to like do, do design. And I don't think I, I think I'm getting better. I'm still not to the point where I want to be, but it was now this, for this last couple of years has been kind of like, can I improve on that? Make that transition. Yeah. Um, especially now our directing more and like, mm -hmm. it just helps me so much. Like even on, on the professional side of like, um, because again, like you, people will say a lot of things. People say they can do whatever. Like, yeah. But when, when you actually do it, it when yeah. you got to sit there and do it, yeah, it's like a whole other fine. thing, right? And I, I'm one of them. Like, yeah. And, and that's why, I, but I'm aware of it. I'm like, ah, I think I can do this. It's okay. Yeah, I respect that. But when I keep, when I sit down to do it, it's like, oh my god, it's yeah. Shit. And yeah. I've, but that's probably great for a lot of artists to anybody listening and people that will listen. It's everybody has it. Every artist has it. Even the most talented artists, like it's that. But it is that. I think it's that that part right there is what makes you good. Right, yeah, and yeah. that's what sort of sets you apart from everybody else, 
And if you don't sort of accept that and if you maybe expect yourself to be, you know, or you think of yourself too highly, right? right. You're not challenging yourself enough, right? right? Exactly. You're, you're not putting yourself in a position to actually fail and right. learn from it and grow from it. Right. And that's, I feel like, the struggle that all artists go through at some yeah. stage. Yeah. And, you know, there's different levels, but I feel like designing as a whole, I mean, you've gone through kind of production, right? And now you're talking about actually wanting to create fully on your own. That seems to be, to me, that's like the, the mecca of like creativity, right? That's where you get the, the most creative people can just come up with stuff and just do it, right? Oh, yeah. And it's tough. I see that all the time with just working from reference and that's part of your job. Mm -hmm. You have to just make that thing and execute. Yeah. But I can imagine that's probably crazy freeing for you now to be challenging yourself in that new yeah, area. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. It's, it's exactly what you're talking about. Like, it, I think that mix of like production and, and, and creative side is it's opens up so many doors than like even you know inside of a studio like you know like i want to do so much like yeah. it's just it's it's awesome it's um, time right you just need more time it's more time like, i wish yeah. there was way more time i know <laughs> i already made two kids so maybe i'll put them to work. <laughs> give me a couple years are you gonna have any more or are you <laughs> sticking no, with two no i'm done i just need one for uvs and the other one for rigging you know, put them to work, <laughs> them work. <laughs> i'll pay for rendering it's fine it's <laughs> amazing well i mean they're gonna have jobs at the very least that's great i'll be the creative director of uh are of your kids do your kids get into uh are they how old are they now uh four and five and three almost yeah. have you introduced them to any digital tools oh yeah, yeah yeah i've got them a little tablet oh that's awesome. i think my so my youngest is a, is a girl and she seems like she's got more she's got the 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 behavior for, okay. for the art yeah and but your son is he's i mean he loves what i do and one yeah. of the reasons why i started doing all those like the smash bros and uh, i did a lot of cupheads and a lot of like the cuphead pieces were amazing dude, thanks man yeah and it's been like mostly because of him to be honest and even he's into, he, that stuff. he's into that stuff and he's like oh what are you gonna do next or we'll do this one we'll do yeah. that one and it's been super fun and even help see him because he reflects a lot of like our behavior and everything so see him like trying to paint every character and it's like i i had to print all the characters for him and he was going through and painting every single one of them that's uh, cool which is kind of like the challenge that i set myself to do but i didn't do it but yeah he is he is doing it <laughs> that's it's, amazing it's crazy. yeah it's so fun to see so and it's just fun that it touches him a little bit too because another part of it was especially with the social media i think i got into the mindset a little bit of like what what is most impactful for the people that are outside of our bubble a little bit because you know no matter what we are inside of like the zbrush and the people working in this industry and we serve the fans especially doing a lot of marketing for god of war and being more on that side of things i did get exposed on kind of the fan side and like what people like and things like that so i i set myself that kind of challenge too to like try to impact people outside the zbrush uh kind of uh, yeah the people that are already all following all yeah that yeah stuff the people who, who have seen my, my work is like how can i impact people outside yeah. our zone uh and that's been a crazy challenge too like i can imagine trying to understand how how the human works and what sure. they're looking for what the media is looking for hey, like you tell us because we're always trying to do the same thing yeah. you know it's like it's, it's always about trying to expand because zbrush is yeah it's a great it's an amazing production tool and we make right. a lot of tools for production and it's it's sort of like that's that's where people know it from. But right. it's also just, it's a great tool to create art and you can do pretty much anything Tons with it. Stuff, yeah. And it's just trying to capture others outside and figure out what it is that they're interested in. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure a part of it is like, you know, doing things like more uh, popular topics like Cuphead or things that like are more well known right. probably makes a big difference, right. you know? Like yeah, when I, so, sorry, I didn't interrupt you. No, but like, even when I did the, uh, the Yoshi, for the Smash Bros thing. Yeah. Like, you know, it was like literally 15 minutes. I recorded it. I just grabbed a sphere and I made a Yoshi thing. And, and and then after I painted on top and all that. And I looked at it, I was like, eh, like, Not I don't it. like this yeah. stuff. And then I showed my wife and, and my kid and they loved like, it. Oh, I was like, this yeah. is amazing. Right. And then you show him this. And then I was and like, then no, like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't even care about this stuff. <laughs> but I posted that thing and like, it got so much traction. It was like, and then I had to even take a step back and it's like, and I have, to, and I do a lot of thinking myself. It's like, why, like, why did that happen? Mm -hmm. uh, what is people looking for? Uh, do I have to detach myself from my own kind of self pride and, mm -hmm. and be like, what does that even matter? Mm -hmm. Like, so there's a lot, of, especially as artists, and be like, I'm very proud of the stuff that I put out and the stuff that I do. Yeah. And I'm always trying to present myself in a certain way, but like, does it all like to to what extent does it matter? Right? I understand that. And it's like. Uh, it's that always the biggest challenge, and I feel that pretty much everybody goes through that, and especially with the social media stuff. And but that was a fun kind of example of like, 
man, I hate this thing. You and never like would have expected that to blow up. That, yeah, yeah. all the stuff. Like I made the Bowser. I was like super happy. The Bowser, it looks awesome. Uh-huh. Like, it's different and everything. It's like, yeah, okay, people liked it. But like that Yoshi thing. Right? Yeah. Or the Kirby is like a ball. Yeah. And it's like people love it. It's just popular yeah. culture, man. It's, it's yeah. such an interesting animal to try and figure out. But yeah. I mean, one of our, like one of the largest exposures I think I've seen recently is like, Ryan Reynolds posted a, a concept character uh, piece of Pikachu, a crossover of Pikachu and Deadpool. Yeah, yeah. Right? And that gets like, thing. you know, five or six million views right. just on Instagram alone. Right, who yeah, knows yeah. where else that goes. Yeah. But that's like, that's a great way to get exposure, yeah. right? But this stuff, I feel like, we, as in the internal sort of artist community, we appreciate this stuff m- more because that's just like our expectations are so much higher for each right. other, I think. Right, yeah. But then on the outside world, they don't even know how this stuff works, let alone like where it comes from. Right. So it, I think there's just a disconnect there that yeah, yeah, yeah. there's probably some magic in there that it's just yeah. a matter of like finding, because you don't want to, you don't want to sell it to a, just, just to get the views. You want it to be awesome creatively but then yeah. you also want it to get views right you want people to see it and like yeah, you yeah. know appreciate what you do we all do it because we want yeah. people to see it and love it right we wouldn't do it if we didn't right. you know so i feel like there is there's a sort of hybrid I think, the, in there. I think the secret to to most of that stuff is consistency and that's why i think it works for especially when you're trying to sell a product like in, and you go through that with games it's like before we launch there is a marketing campaign for like every week there's something because first week you do something, you get a certain amount of people. Second week, that people plus that. And as you build upon that, and that was learning that, I think the Smash challenge for me was to try a little bit of that and do like, a, I was doing actually daily stuff um, to like one after the other. And then there's that kind of, what's going to be happening the next day or what's coming next day? And there's always that kind of stuff. And it's funny you mentioned the Pikachu uh, Deadpool one because yeah. that was done by uh, Boss Logic. Okay. He's a guy on, on Instagram. He's yeah. got, you know, one yeah, I couldn't remember the artist's name. Follow. Yeah, and I, I, I've been talking to him too, and uh, he does a lot of that stuff, and he kind of figured out that magic a little he's bit. He's getting that. He's getting the views now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it is like people love his work, and he's serving a fan base and all that stuff, and and it's just understanding, like even for me, because I come from a completely different side of things, which is right. a craft and and right. making it amazing, and I went through all that, and it's like, how do you merge those two, mm-hmm. those two worlds, and and it's. I think it's a fun challenge. Not that I that I want to do that for or whatever is like what I'm becoming, but it's like sure. how do I learn a little bit more about that? I am involved a lot with more marketing now and that kind of stuff. It just opens up this other side of the industry, which I, I bet you are already in there. And, and ZBrush has so much it. potential. Like it does. Yeah. Agreed. And we are we are always challenging ourselves too to try and reach those areas as well. It's like yeah. how do we capture you know somebody out there who's a kid that might not necessarily want to go work in specifically games or right. film, but they might just want to make some stuff. You yeah. know, it's like yeah, yeah. your kids are clearly inept and able to capture and use these tools. Yeah. Right. And they seem to love it. It's like. My coworker Joseph, he's got his kids, had his kids know, in ZBrush yeah. forever, you know? know? They're just yeah. out there making stuff. Especially with the future with like VR and mm-hmm. 3D printing and all that stuff. But especially like just the, on the personal side too of like building and getting the exposure. And because all the stuff that I'm talking about, I wouldn't recommend to someone who's starting and maybe try to get some social presence and be like, oh, no, I have to do like dailies or everything, yeah. something like that. The Inktober was, it, it is kind of like that too. It is, yeah. Uh, but I think, especially if you're starting, like I wouldn't confuse those things. Like, I think definitely the craft is something that people should focus on yeah. at the beginning. Because I see a lot of people posting a lot, and and I think it's fine to post studies, but um, it's it's a it's a tough challenge to understand is when you're when you're starting. But I think going on the craft side is is much much nicer. Like when we the stuff that we're talking about, find a school or find mm-hmm. a teacher, learn this, learn the tool, learn pipeline, learn. Every uh, part of the pipeline, all that stuff. Yeah, pretty much. I just want to walk. clarify that because that's my talk. And that's a good no, but that's like, a good point to clarify. And just walk before you can run, right? You yeah, got to yeah. be able to sort of establish all of those skill sets first, and then once you reach that sort of master level, then it's time. That's where you get to have I feel like the most fun in your creative career. Yeah. To then now break away and start thinking about those things because you have the skill set to do right, it. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, you're you're sort of like you're jumping ahead and you're trying to just get exposure and it's not really always about that, right? Yeah. It's, you know, exposure is great, but if you're not really prepared for it, then you might be thrown into something that you're not yeah, going to yeah. be capable of doing, right? Yeah. And you see a lot of people like going from the independent zone as well. Like a lot of people are, have Patreons and all that stuff. And mm-hmm. it is, I see a lot of kids that have that goal of like, I'll make a Patreon and um, so I can do my own stuff. Like a lot of people who are doing that is already, already have years and yeah. are very well established, have done their share on on 
on studio jobs. And I think LA, like if you're in LA, you you probably have a little bit more exposure to that stuff. But if yeah, definitely. different countries and stuff, I see a lot of people just trying to most of the times mimic what they see and it might not be the best way to get to where they're, they're trying to go. That's well, it's good advice. I mean, especially for somebody who's gone through that yourself, right? You've yeah, come yeah. from that and you kind of gone through it in the way that seems to work best. Right. Um, it definitely seems like all those just different experiences make that like best yeah. sort of recipe for success. Right. Yeah. I'm trying, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I mean, Eamon, Eamon Oktar, I don't know if you know Eamon, he's, he's one of those guys that, uh, you know, he's created his own um, sort of IP, Fungosaurus, which is like a series of creatures and toys. And he's sort of like design, he's designing them all himself, right? And he's gone through the ringer of like visual effects and production and yeah. like trying out new things, going into VR. And that's like, that seems to be what I see a lot of professionals coming into this area now where like yourself yeah. that are, have been all through it all. And now you're just like, okay, I want to come up with my own stuff. And yeah, I yeah. want to like, now you have everything you need to do it. Right. Now they understand all the parts of yeah, that you need that exactly. are needed. Yeah. Nothing. So do you think for you moving forward, just for some of these side projects, are you you brought some statues here? I'd love to talk oh, yeah. about some of these some of the work. For sure. Um, like these pieces are these are um, things that are you looking to maybe go into prototyping and toys? Uh, so these are more of fan art that I did. Mm -hmm. But I've been playing a lot with just uh, 3D printing in general. Yeah. I've been trying a lot more on? affordable printers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, this was done actually on the Ender 3. So oh, it's a wow. $250 printer. Yeah, that's and, amazing. Uh, that's on the Ender? Yeah. Wow. So that was, it was a, the challenge for me was to figure out settings and uh, try to get it to like materials and try different things because I use the form stuff before and it's very yeah. much plug and play. You just right. put the resin. Yeah. She looks amazing. It does look That's amazing. It, yeah. I know for sure. We got a bunch of stuff outside. It's mind yeah, blowing. Yeah. yeah. But for me, so I got, I got that too. But for me, it was like, can I make something, especially I was doing a lot of the sketches and I just want to have stuff. Can I get it to a more affordable? And when I got, got into the world of like 3D printing and the ender and the filaments, it's something that I feel that we ourselves don't have a lot of exposure on, but it's huge. Mm -hmm. Like even the people who use this kind of stuff, they're not aware of ZBrush and, yeah. and they're just they're just downloading 3D models and they don't even know how that gets yep. made. And it's like, oh, look at this amazing Thanos. It's like, yeah, I, I guess someone preaching to the thing. choir. We're, yeah. we're always like, you don't, you don't want to make it? Like, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like you're trying to introduce people to that. But I guess that's yeah. the skill set still, right? Yeah, you yeah. got to teach people how to do that. Right, stuff. right. But when I got into, you know, exposed to that stuff, it was, it was just mind blowing, and and I made a lot of good friends that people are trying, and it's been that kind of collaboration, and I was able to get some good results. Uh, this stuff was made on, uh, um, so I for, printed the first one with the Photon, okay. Photon S, which is a four hundred bucks printer too. That's very affordable. Yeah, yeah, and the resin is super cheap too. So it's been kind of like. Eye opening for me. I was just like, oh, can I get this? this and you cheap can and actually achieve this on these very affordable printers. I mean, the quality yeah. for this is, as to me, equally as good as a form. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, so you can get pretty good, pretty good results. So it's been kind of a new adventure that I've been trying. And I, Glauco and Igor are also very into the 3D printing stuff. So we've been kind of bounce back ideas. And, That's really awesome. Uh, trying different things. And I've been trying to, I've been doing like Monster Palooza and those shows for a few years now. Yeah. Uh, and I finally got to the more affordable uh, side of things. So I'm going to try to do more. And that's bigger, great. bigger pieces. Maybe bigger pieces? As big as, no. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's <laughs> I don't even know how they print that. I <laughs> honestly don't know either. I mean, those are the, like when you get into CNCs and yeah, you get yeah. like the very large scale stuff. But man, if you go that rat road, people are going to lose their minds. No, I'm not. You should. That's like I'm... fiberglass. And, and I don't have the space. <laughs> I need more kids. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely need a bigger team for that. Yeah. Uh, that's great. So these, I mean, this is just you. You're using ZBrush as you always have. Yeah. Uh, so really just figuring out more of the, the technical side of just figuring out how to uh, put pieces back together right. using a smaller form print bed right. or smaller scale print bed. Exactly. Yeah. And just keys. Yeah. Yeah. The exciting thing is that a lot of these, because the LCD, the, the photon is like the LCD projecting ones. Yeah. A lot of these printers are, are or companies are coming up with bigger beds now, which is that super exciting. Uh, probably yeah. this year or next year we'll start seeing, uh, I think there's one actually coming in November, which is like a bigger than the, the new form. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. And if they can get to the same quality, it's gonna be because the resin is, is way cheaper. So I think for for personal projects, it's a lot more affordable. For sure, cool. for sure. No, that's amazing. So you have uh, how many of these things have you been printing so far? And like, you have uh, are you just going through and just creating these on the fly right now and like on yeah, the free yeah. time? Yeah. And part of my talk too was go is gonna I'm gonna show a little bit of the differences from designing this because mm -hmm. it was more of a, just a sketch, and then what it takes to make it printable. Yeah. Because there's a lot of yeah, the uh, prep work that needs to be done, and with the keys and everything. So like everything, just to you know, 
Yeah. Just to work. work just nice. basic magnets and keys. Yeah. Yeah. That's and then amazing. The, just said I want to at least share the difference on that stuff and, and uh, show a little bit more about that. So that's going to be just a little part of the, the talk. But, but yeah, I mean, I got a couple of these printers and I got a couple of these. I've been just kind of stocking up and making it. Uh, that's amazing. How many, of those you, how many of them do you actually have? Do so you have two of each? I have two. Uh, right now I have Glockel's. Is, I borrow his. So I have okay. two Enders and I have uh, Ender 5, so three filament ones. Yeah. And I have a Photon S. And a, uh, another one that's still in the box. So, what was your what was your uh, inspiration to want to seek out something more affordable? Was that just to to maybe give other people the capacity to actually no, explore it? No, it? it was more a frustration. Than, uh, <laughs> I than, see it because uh, I wanted to do a quick sketch and print print it. But every time I was doing that, it would cost me a couple hundred dollars. Right, to do it. you're spending more money basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I just started looking into options, and then especially with the Monster Palooza, I think it was right after last year's Monster Palooza because Igor he got a CR10, which is a similar Ender but bigger one. Yeah, and he was just printing little uh, bears that he made. And he was selling those as is. And uh, if you go to cons, you see a lot of those, that, that happening. Yeah. But it was just like, okay, like we could actually do this and it's affordable. Like just to print something like that, you know, you cost, you hurt the bed, you cost you money for the resin, you have to, yeah. at least a couple hundreds. And he printed like 35 of them, wow. something like that. Yeah. And it was like, okay, uh, you know, we need to explore more of that and see the options. And I was reaching out, trying to make partnerships with the companies that are already have, that's why I have a lot of printers. I didn't buy in, uh, them, but they're okay, kind so of you're making working with them. Yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, let me test it. Here's my work. Let me sure. uh, kind of do do some of that. Uh, and it's been super fun and uh, testing different materials and all, especially with the filament. It, the learning curve is so big. Of like, you have to worry about the nozzle temperature and the bed temperature and the yeah. nozzle size and the filament. That's a whole other set of things that you're like figuring out that you're learning. Yeah, right? yeah. It's like it's a, almost a technical thing. It's like extruder speed. Yeah, and all you know, of that. exactly. It's yeah. like that stuff makes a big difference. Yeah. and like infill and how much and right. if it's not too if it's too much or yeah. and then supports is a whole another thing too. Hey, you know what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've done I've done enough. <laughs> I've done enough. But the like so these guys with with these printers, do you? Uh, like for your supports, it doesn't look like you have. Um, no, that one's much much cleaner. That's right? so much cleaner. What was the what what was the what gave you so much success with that particular one? Well, Did you go straight a lot up? of cuts. A lot of cuts. Yeah, yeah, just alignment. Yeah, alignment yeah. and just yeah. breaking off parts. And that's why I like the filament stuff better because the supports are not invasive mm -hmm. as the the resin ones. Yeah, because yeah. it's like to hold and. First, like hollowing and then doing less supports and hiding it. Yeah. But I try to put the supports on the places that I can send it. Yeah. That's kind of a little thing, a trick that I'm trying to do. How much are you using ZBrush for like technical processes? You do like any hollowing out in ZBrush? Or Everything, you just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're doing all of it there and yep. using the printer software to do supports? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm, pretty much. That's great. Yeah. I try to do, uh, what is it called? Mesh mixer. Yeah. And mesh all that mixer. stuff to hollow and yeah. all that stuff. But with the Boolean stuff in ZBrush now, it's so It's easy. amazing, right? You it's can do all amazing. your keys there now. I'll tell you, I remember it because I've been doing the more of the statues for for a lot of years now. And I remember doing all that stuff with Dynamesh and subtract Dynamesh. Uh -huh. and it's like... It's not... It's it's not it's the same. It's mind-blowing, yeah. Now yeah. it's like, oh, I can actually move this and see it live. It's, it's impressive. Yeah, it's no, amazing. that's really great to hear. Um, yeah. Well, you'll be excited to know we, uh, we actually just, for part of the demo last night, Joseph showed off. Uh, we have some new drafting features. So actually being able to figure out if you do end up going to like making molds. Yeah. I don't know if that's something you're interested in, but like yeah, yeah. mass producing them. Yeah. Uh, we have some awesome new tools for just actually turning on a render view state to see areas where you have drafting issues that oh, no, aren't going to be able to fit in a mold. And it's just very quick and easy to just fix those things super that's fast. Cool. Yeah. 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 We're trying to actually spend some more time in those areas because there are more people yeah. using these tools now. And it's, I think it's always been about, it's been a niche sort of group of people that are into it people like us that just want to try it out, yeah. but actually making use of it, I think it just comes down to exactly what you're saying is cost, right? Yeah. Is it just, you don't want to spend that much money to make something. You want to be right. able to kick that thing out super fast, right. not spend too much money. And then if you want to mass produce it, make a mold and figure that stuff out on your own. Yeah. But uh, there's ways to go about it. So the technical stuff is great. And yeah, Live Billions is awesome. How much are you, I'm just curious, just looking at some of these pieces, how much are you using Live Billions in your process now in terms of modeling? Because I know you come from like Topo yeah, yeah. and that sort of background. Yeah, not much at all. Uh, okay, so just for the a lot cuts and yeah. yeah. Especially this guy was all, because I initially did a sketch just to get the shapes and then I painted. So that final image is mo mostly painted okay. on top. Yeah. But then uh, that's what I'll show t today or and it's like how do I get to that 
very rough sketch to the final. Yeah. Uh, so That's there's a lot good. of a lot of cleanup, uh, a lot of masking. Okay. Yeah. That's great. High polish. <laughs> but I did. The H polish will do wonders for you, man. Yeah, yeah. You probably mastered that brush more than anybody else. And then uh, uh, the Z remesh helps a lot. Okay, so you're doing so a lot you of do, remeshing. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of isolate something because it's very hard to get it super clean, but once you Z remesh, you can right. smooth it out super yeah. fast. Yeah, that's yeah. a good thing. Is like the, what I always talk about this, the introduction of Dynamesh was like a whole new world of Mm -hmm. creating, right? Instead of having to go get a base mesh, you get Dynamesh, you can right. rough something out. Yeah. And then getting Z remesh here, you can take that, repurpose that piece, and then work on that final final. Yeah. yeah. Without having to do, how much retopo do you end up doing for your hard surface? Do you still do a lot of like manual retopo at all? No. Is it all sculpting? So I'll tell you, the when I, as a, when I was at Bioware, it was a lot, I was very much into like, I hate people who sculpt yeah. hard, hard surface in ZBrush. And I used to do a lot in Max, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to do a quick sketch, and I'll Kind of retopple everything in Max and extract it and make it uh, support and all, all that chamfer it all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it was like six, six, seven years ago. But I was very much like that's when the hard surface people started came up and, and the ZBrush hard surface people are coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, this doesn't look as good if I were to do it. <laughs> like, in, uh, like everybody in, in every Max. situation when something new's coming in, it's like, no, no, yeah, we're yeah. gonna do it this I can way. Do, <laughs> I can, yeah, I can see what Z, was done in ZBrush, whatever. I can do it in Max. It's yeah, gonna look cleaner. Yeah. But now it's just like, I don't know. It just it looks so clean. Was it just the, a matter of time of just getting introduced to it, oh, yeah. the ways I, of doing it? Yeah. And then, yeah. I then, still don't know how to use the, what do you call the the Z uh, tools and all that stuff oh. to like extract oh. extrude and chamfer. Oh, and the Z modeler? Z modeler? Oh, yeah. we got to get you on Z modeler, man. Igor's been trying to get me for it. I'm he telling is you. The master on that well, stuff. I mean, I can understand. If you're coming from Max and you're doing the manual topo, in that sort of traditional way. So you modeler is kind of going back to that. Yeah, yeah. But man, I, I'm gonna have to make, I'm just gonna make you watch this Ubisoft presentation on some of their clothes stuff, because yeah. it just adds another level if you get into like Z remeshing and right. like adding clean edge loops and just getting some of these little like grooves and cuts that you can actually get yeah. a lot out of it. But yeah, yeah. it's just another tool that you, you right. know, eventually maybe we'll get Igor, you. Igor is, he is. He loves it. He loves it. And when I see it, it's like, okay, this is pretty impressive. But yeah. it's just so much. And I, I have time. But I a lot of it. these uh, cuts and stuff I'm doing with a slash brush. Because okay. it's like super clean. And yeah. it gives me all this nice edge. There's ways to do it. But I'm sure if I knew all the other stuff. Well, don't get me wrong. I actually have a lot of respect in, a lot of, in, in terms of like the modeling and sculptural sense. Like just using a sculpting brush, to be honest, at Pixelogic, we love that people want to just sculpt. Like the technical tools are great, and Z Modeler offers you that. But yeah, yeah. also, you can obviously you're able to capture these kinds of details that yeah, people yeah, yeah. are doing with Topo, but you're doing it with sculpting brushes, right? Yeah. And it's clearly just as good, right? There's really yeah. no difference when the final product comes out. Right. It, you know. Well, sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, still, you it's might, not perfect. I'm I sure you it. got like a whole <laughs> checklist of items that you're like, you're I don't like this, that. I don't like this, yeah. I don't like this. But nobody else is seeing that stuff, right? I've been doing a lot with the extract when I do a quick sketch, and I'll, I'll show a little bit of that today. But I'll do a quick uh, mask and extract it, yeah, and then zero match so it's clean, yeah. Like just that just gives me like 90 percent there, right? Or, like, and then you can the just shape. do your handiwork and go in, which yep. to me is always the most fun part. Right, right. When you use a brush and just go in, it's just it's the most natural. Make all the pen. Right. Using. Yeah. I just avoid using uh, a lot of the kit bash or, or pre-made alphas and things like that. Yeah. I still I haven't done a project where I, I use that a lot. I have like you know bolts and stuff like that just to speed up. But I try sure. to try to kind of. You actually do it with a sculpt with a sculpting brush. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So like even when you get into these little dots and things, you're actually just going and yeah, sculpting. Yeah. That's amazing, man. Good. That's that's <laughs> really impressive. It really is. What about texturing? Like you get into this is all just brushes going just, across. Yeah. Uh, no, that's all alpha. Okay. Alpha work. Okay. So, like, just every once in a while, you'll have to go in and, like, punch in an alpha for, yeah. like, a procedural thing like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'll do a store of morph target, drop yeah. drop an alpha and paint out what yeah. I don't want out of it and yeah. stuff like that. What about, uh, sorry, I'm getting into your, your production stuff here, but uh, panel loops. Talk about that all do you ever use panel loops? Uh, so you're yeah, using a yeah. mask extract? Yeah. Panel loops is a really great feature. Just get little... Yeah. Extrusions and things. The bevels are really nice. Yeah, because yeah. Igor made me do it. Uh, Igor's getting you <laughs> on all the technical stuff. I know, stuff. he was like, <laughs> let me show you something. Because like, he sees me doing this stuff and he's like, let me show you how I would do it. And like, yeah. Panel loops and stuff. So Igor, I mean, you, Igor, you can Glocko as well. You guys yeah. are, uh, you guys stay connected really well. Mm -hmm. Just on your personal work as well. Yeah, 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 for sure. So you guys are challenging each other on different tools and features and things like yeah. that. That's Igor really does. He does have. a lot more of the the 3D printing and working with Sideshow and those guys. So he, yeah. he every time I have questions, like he would probably have done something similar yeah. in the past. And and because it's a printed printed uh, industry, you can do a lot more of yeah. just 
just crazy different pipelines that you wouldn't use in a in the game model and stuff right. like that. Yeah, because yeah, you're getting when you go into printing, you're getting more into the sculptural sense again, right? right? You're not having to deal with final output, UVs, all that right. kind of stuff. You can use UVs in as a tool to just make something, but it's not like all oh, that UV shells crap and I can't use yeah, that yeah. in production. How I'm right? gonna retopple this and uh, yeah. how many pieces do I need and mm-hmm. where does that fit on the yeah. Yeah. So I guess you you do love you still love the the production side you get a, you get sort of a good mix of that but then doing this stuff this way you're kind of getting to turn that part of your brain off and yeah. go into a new sector and that seems to be you've been at the same place for seven years now yeah yeah it's so been, maybe yeah. that's a, a large contributor of what's making it a little bit easier to stay in a place and yeah. be comfortable right oh yeah just yeah. trying different things even at the beginning of the project I did a lot of the traditional clay sculpts and it's yeah. something that I've been doing for the you know, most of my, my career because I like and I like the connection to it, mm-hmm. and especially like at the beginning since I was using clay and uh, it helped a lot with just, uh, you know, training your eye. And it's the same thing. Like I, I feel I can sculpt some something like this, but like when you actually do it mm-hmm. and you get frustrated and you try to get better, yeah. that uh, the crab guy uh, from Peter, yeah. um, like that was a, a challenge. Like I knew I, I was doing a lot of these keys and make a full production piece in, in ZBrush, but I was, I've never... I've done it before, but it was always kind of bad. So it was kind of like, oh, now I have to just challenge myself and try to do a full-on production piece in clay. Yeah. And using different tools and all this stuff. So it's been challenging in that way. And I could do that in the studio as well when we have time. I always Don't try to give you that time, huh? Well, I had time early yeah. before, but not, not anymore. Not now. Yeah. <laughs> not anymore. Our director's yeah. like, nope. Sorry, yeah, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> you're full up. Your day is... But we're trying to get, you know, some 3D printers and try to do more of that stuff, but that's with, great. with ZBrush and all that. Yeah. No, that's amazing. Yeah. So I guess uh, last thing I'll ask you before, because I know you got to get going here, but the, um, the what do you think, what is your biggest, uh, what do you find your biggest challenge to be right now? Because you, you have, I mean, obviously you've mastered uh, character work. You've got creature work. Is there anything in particular that you're... Right. Um, I want to do more of the kind of world building because mm-hmm. uh, I that's what kind of was saying like maybe I can uh, mix the design stuff that I'm learning now and trying to get better at that I don't think I'm there yet so that would be the first thing I want to get better and then can I expand that to world building can I do environments can I yeah. just keep going and uh, mix all these mediums and try to come up with a style that's different yeah. but it's still like I'm still trying to replicate some of the stuff I do a lot that you know it's not there but yeah. uh, just trying to expand on that I want to try to do more, more render I, I want to go back to some of the things that I was doing before that I kind of lost a little bit on the track, but now that I'm actually trying to do it again, maybe do like a quick animation or something yeah. like that. Now that I've, like I said, like, like I'm not worrying too much about the portfolio. Mm-hmm. I want to go back and just explore different things. And That's pretty amazing. I think yeah. that for anybody listening, that's a good thing to look forward to. Yeah, it's yeah. like now you can go back and explore those things and build an environment and actually have like tell a story and yeah. get into like not just building the asset, right, but yeah. actually putting the asset in a place that you sort of concept and conceive up in your mind. Right. I can imagine like, I mean, you got a skill set, you can animate, you can render, you can paint, you can sculpt. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got, you got a pretty, and then you put the kids, I say I can, you put the we'll kids to it. work and then you're good, man. You got a full production team. You're in, you're in business. Yeah. Um, well, dude, it was a pleasure to talk to you, man. And no, uh, you're going to be presenting today. You're going to be showing off, like you said, um, some of your uh, sort of, uh, Taking the sketch to, to the final cleanup. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. that's really good stuff. And for uh, well, this we- podcast will be going up. Oh, well, actually, everybody's seeing it now. So that's coming up in a few hours. Yeah, four. Yeah, four o'clock. Yeah. Okay, cool, man. Well, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, cheers. Uh-huh.